Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is an entirely safe assertion beyond any question to say that no beast has ever borne so great a burden as that young donkey that was selected to fulfill the prophecy of Zechariah, chosen to be the ride for the king. What other lowly pack animal was ever tasked with carrying its maker, the maker of the universe? What other creature has ever carried the weight of the Creator? Yes, Jesus' donkey ride on Palm Sunday is something, isn't it? It shows us the full extent of Jesus' humility that Jesus did not choose a regal horse or a Roman chariot with blazing wheels to make his entrance into the city of Jerusalem. And it also shows us the full extent of Jesus' humiliation. That is, that time during which Jesus gave up full use of the divine power and authority that were his from all eternity as true God. Surely that was on display here. Was it not as you see how acquainted Jesus was with the ways of animals? And the very ordinariness of this scene of of a man throwing his leg over a donkey's back and settling in between the front legs and the hindquarters, perhaps reaching out his hand to gently stroke the donkey's ears, whispering a few kind words to it as he rode along. If that doesn't display an emptying of all divine glory, then what would? It is a striking sight. And yet it strikes me as we see Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey that the humility should be ours. After all, Jesus chose an animal. An animal selected to to carry the king, the son of David. As if to make it clear, if it wasn't clear enough already, that salvation was not going to be won by human strength. Jesus didn't enter into Jerusalem carried on the shoulders of his disciples. There was no chauffeur No chariot to drop our celestial guest off at the place of his death. There was just Jesus settling on to the spine of a donkey that strode into the city on the red carpet laid out before them, comprised of palms and people's coats. Just donkey hooves going... Clop, 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 as Jesus entered the city where he would be put to death. Let's be clear about this, though. Of all of the people that were there on that day, only Jesus truly understood what was taking place. The crowd that had gathered was there because a few days before they had seen that man on a donkey standing and speaking into a tomb And in wonder of wonders, as he spoke into the tomb, the corpse stood up and walked out. They wanted to see more stuff like that. The Pharisees who were muttering, they were there because they were envious of the growing popularity of that man on that donkey. They were there to shake their heads and rage at the sound of the praises being sung to him. And even Jesus' own disciples, as John tells us, even they didn't fully understand what was taking place. Not then. It was only later that they looked back and saw the fulfillment of all of the prophecies in Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And it's clear that none of them understood it, for you and I know how the week ended. 
how it ended with all of his disciples abandoning him and coming crawling with fear and trepidation to the foot of his cross to watch him die. And the week ended with that crowd that had welcomed him forsaking Jesus and selecting Barabbas the murderer as their choice, as their hero. And the week ended with the Pharisees getting their way and putting into motion the events that in a twist of divine irony would prove the profound yet unrealized truth of their words. The whole world has gone after him. Yes, the truth of those words, for what no one realized on that day, was that the world was right there, on a donkey's back, for resting on Jesus' sinless shoulders was the burden that he was carrying into the city of Jerusalem. The burden of the sins of an entire world. The burden of evil and wickedness and guilt. The weight of evil, wicked, and guilty people. The weight of you and me and of our eternal salvation was there on a donkey's back, gently swaying back and forth with each clop, 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 clop. My friends, let's not make the mistake of not understanding what was taking place there as Jesus entered into the city of Jerusalem. Let's see it clearly enough that he entered that city bearing your burden and mine. I fear, though, that, that sometimes that is lost on us. Amidst cries of Hosanna to our Lord Jesus and the praises that we offer, somehow we forget that he was bearing our burdens. And instead, they continue to weigh down on us. What burdens are you carrying? Perhaps it is the burden of guilt that lurking around every mem corner in your memory is a reminder of that thing that you did that you can never forget and that has an uncanny way of finding its way to the front of your mind in the middle of the night. And maybe that guilt has even motivated you, motivated you to try harder, to try to be a better person, to try to do things to make up for what it is that you did. And though perhaps now you are a different person and you have done an awful lot, still try as hard as you might, you have discovered that it doesn't make the memory that at one time you were that person who did that thing go away. And what you loathe and despise is what is seared on your mind. Or perhaps you're packing the weight of a particular temptation. And every time you think you can shrug that backpack off and let it fall to the ground, it just comes crushing back down on you. An evil desire that has gripped you, an evil desire to do away with God's commandments and to do what you want, to have what isn't yours, or to have who isn't yours. 
And though you try so hard, you can't keep that thought out of your head. And though you tame your head and you know what's right, you can't stop your heart from wanting what you know is wrong. The evil desires of the flesh are sticky. They're not so easily shrugged off. They have a way of sticking with us, of dragging us down. Maybe though your burden isn't just one particular sin or one particular temptation, but it's everything. It's the fact that everywhere you turn, there is so much pressure being placed on you, so much that depends on you. And at the end of the day, you just feel like a failure. You try to focus on your job and what you have to do there, and and you turn around to discover that you're neglecting your family and your spouse. You focus on your family and your spouse, and you turn around to face the wrath of your boss. Everywhere it turns, there's demands placed on you and on your time, demands for you to perform. It feels like the weight of the world is riding on you and everything depends on you. And if you can gasp out one word beneath that weight, it would be inadequate. I'm just inadequate. Or maybe the burden that you live with is the burden of living a life that you have come to realize isn't in your hands at all. You would much prefer to walk on your own and have no one carry you. Not even Jesus himself. But you've discovered that life isn't in your control. And the power and sway of Satan and the effects of sin in a sin-filled world that manifest themselves in depression or mental illness. And what that does to you or to your loved one The fear of the future and anxiety over the unknown is just too much to bear. It leaves you breathless. Friends, those are heavy burdens. And I think it's safe to say that even the most strong-willed independent, self-reliant to a fault American would have to admit that sometimes he or she is leveled beneath the load. Which is why I want to invite you as we stand at the beginning of our yearly remembrance of Jesus' suffering and death to stand with me and look at that road that led into Jerusalem, strewn with palms and people's coats, and to see the weight of the world riding on a donkey's back. Jesus, riding into the city of Jerusalem, bearing your burdens, and mine. Jesus, bearing the weight all alone. He didn't ask us to share the burden with him. He didn't hand over the light and like what happens when a son wants to help his father, little realizing that his father is carrying the entirety of the weight. No, Jesus bore the weight by himself alone. He even chose an animal to ride into Jerusalem on, just to make it clear. 
And because we do understand better than the people who were there on that day, because we have the testimony of Jesus' disciples and of all of the scriptures, and because we know how this week will end and how Jesus was heading there on a donkey's back to a quickly arriving betrayal and a crucifixion and a glorious resurrection, because we know that, we know the right thing to do with our burdens. Which is not to continue trying to carry themself, them, them on our own, by ourselves. It's not to try to shift the load to someone else and hope that they can make it lighter for us. The right thing to do with our burdens is not to sit and daydream about leaving the place we're stuck in and and heading off to a distant land to start over, to start fresh. It's not even to hand those burdens over to Jesus. Now the right thing to do with your burdens is to see that they are already resting on Jesus' sinless shoulders. And that before you could even think of handing them over to Jesus, he had already made his donkey ride into Jerusalem. And he had already taken your burden and hung it on a cross and covered it with his blood and buried it in his tomb. The weight is on Jesus' shoulders, not yours. The Pharisees really had no idea how true the words were that they were speaking. For as long as we try to accomplish anything on our own, we will get nowhere. But if by God's grace we are counted among the world that has gone after Jesus, if in holy baptism we have been joined to his death and to his resurrection, then the burden has been borne. Sin has been forgiven. Guilt has been removed. Evil desires have been crucified. And life now and forever depends not on you, but on Jesus. God grant that that we would see that clearly enough as we see that donkey's spine flexing, bending beneath the load. That we would realize what it was that donkey was carrying into Jerusalem. And that we would see on Jesus' sinless shoulders our burdens carried by him. And if your burden is on Jesus' shoulders, then it's not on yours. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you.